I'd like to speak about the Urban Big Data Center. Um, I am the director of this center, and we are a consortium of seven universities um, across Scotland, um, England, and the United States, actually. So we are very international in scope. We have um, a, a quite, a large, uh, quite a few uh, memorandum of understanding and other uh, methods of uh, uh, me mechanisms of relationship with uh, quite a f uh, other international organizations in, in places like uh, Australia, US, uh, Europe, uh, in, in China, and India, and so, and so on and so forth. Our main mission is to um, come up and uh, do innovations for sustainable and socially just cities. So actually that is turn, turning out to be a very big mission because by um, all uh, reports and analysis, the vast majority of the world's population are going to be living in urbanized areas and already are um, living in urbanized areas. And so the big challenges uh, stemming from overpopulation, um, economic disruptions, access to different kinds of uh, social care and education and, and health care and so on and so forth um, are actually quite staggering worldwide. If you look, look at cities globally, so where we come in is to create and raise awareness about a variety of innovative sources of data and methods to use this kind of data across UK stakeholders as well as stakeholders across uh, uh, globally in this uh, in this in in these areas so um, our um, scope is very broad uh, my background my own background is transport uh, we have housing researchers we have researchers who work on education um, um, and other areas like energy, um, um, environment, and so on and so forth. The center represents uh, 10 academic d disciplines uh, in the urban big data, uh, urban social sciences, and the urban uh, and, the, and the data sciences. And um, we run UK's uh, urban uh, data infrastructure. So basically, we are funded by the same organization as Matthew, to host and collect and put together a variety of exciting sources of data to study all kinds of complex problems on that's uh, vexing urban areas. And uh, currently our users are uh, all of from all over the UK, uh, large numbers uh, not only from Scotland, also from uh, England and Wales, and also internationally. Um, so we run this data service, and running it is a non-trivial business because, as I will say in, in the next few uh, minutes, we deal with a very wide variety of different types of data, really large, big data sources, as well as confidential data and, and, and a wide spectrum of data sources. And in addition to running the data service, we are also, um, uh, em we have embarked on this ambitious training and capacity building program and uh, we are running now training courses um, on basic methods uh, on, on basic methods related uh, uh, courses as well as courses on more advanced topics in uh, urban modeling and simulations geographic information science um, as well as um, data science and so on and so forth um, so um, as I s said earlier, um, I think the more exciting parts of what we are doing is looking at a wide spectrum of uh, fairly uh, standard as well as novel sources of data. We get together data from uh, many different sources, such as different types of sensor systems uh, that are in roads, uh, weather monitoring systems, and uh, what have you. We also gather data from uh, many different sources of user-generated content, such as social media, uh, citizen science project, uh, personal sensor surveys of GPS life logging, and so on. We, of course, have access uh, to and would, uh, would continue to aspire to have more, a greater access to um, many different forms of administrative data that have uh, information on uh, citizens' um, uh, transactions with governments in various different ways. Also private sector data of uh, many different kinds. Uh, some uh, kinds of data that are personally interesting to me sitting in this building particularly uh, is the idea that the arts and humanities communities have very interesting 
sources of data that are really unstructured, very novel. They could be in the form of images, they could be in the form of books. These are really exciting data sources and we want to build the tools and technologies to extract information from these data sources and make it available to a number of different uh, types of uh, researchers who are interested in this urban agenda. Um, so some of the more ex um, some of the examples of data that we have at this current time are um, the integrated multimedia city data uh, platform, which is sort of a one of a kind comprehensive data database using many many different data sources on, in fact, the city of Glasgow, and Mark Livingston, who was a project manager for this project, is sitting right over there in the blue shirt, you can't hide. I pointed you out to the audience. So it it's, it's actually starts off being um, a, a, a social survey of about 1,500 households in the city of Glasgow, and also queries about, uh, not only about their uh, social demographics and use of um, uh, information and communications technology, tra transportation and uh, literacy and so on and so forth, but we also queried very detailed um, travel uh, patterns and also instrumented a uh, subset of these uh, individuals with GPS and life logging data so that they were able to go around the city collecting phot photographic images of um, the city of Glasgow, sort of giving us a worldview of the way they see their world. So that it's not just a static data set, it's really understanding uh, data from uh, the, 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 uh, from images of uh, collected by these large groups of, uh, uh, of citizens. Uh, in addition to this IMCD data that has al already now generated several insights relating to sort of uh, transport as um, barriers to uh, senior citizens learning and other things of that nature, another data source that I'd like to point out and welcome you to visit our website as well is this uh, building these big data systems to sort of monitor things like transport on a large scale using ma very many naturally occurring sources of data across the UK. For example, what we are doing at the current time is aspiring to build um, the quality of public transport availability in every bus train and ferry stop across the United Kingdom using uh, online data sources. Uh, another example is that uh, we are trying to build together, uh, put together using multiple sources of data, access to job conditions across the UK at the, area of out, at the, at the level of output area so that one might be able to go in there and sort of query uh, a, a local decision maker might be very interested, for example, to find out whether there is, if, if an employer locates there, if they would have a, a uh, access to a good uh, or adequate labor pool, or if you're a citizen who lives there, whether you have high quality access to jobs, and um, or whether there are others like you who are com competing for the same, same jobs and so on and so forth. So the idea of building these big systems, taking natural various naturally forms of data, actually allows us to answer many of the kind of questions, sort of uh, urban operations and policy uh, questions that might be of interest to many different communities. But um, I also wanted to p point out that uh, some of us in UBDC are very much in the business of big models, not just of big data, but also big computational models, for instance, to really um, uh, stimulate and um, advocate blue skies thinking about what is going to happen to cities of the future. For example, as a result of global climate change, what would happen to coastal cities in the United Kingdom? Or if you have massive swaths of connected vehicles on, and, or car connected cars on streets, uh, as is already happening in some countries, uh, what's going to happen? What, what, what's, what's a street system going to look like? What is ha going to happen to land use patterns? How is the, I, 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 are we going to have different urban density patterns? And this, this is not pie in the sky stuff. I mean, this is real. This is real world events. Um, increasingly, autom automotive manufacturers are going to put in uh, dedicated short range communications transponders inside the, uh, the the vehicle, so that your car will be able to communicate with others around you, the whole idea being that it'll take away the a task of driving from a human driver and give it to the machine, the car, because it is well known in uh, many different academic literatures that uh, 
the vast majority of road fatalities occur because of those last few seconds when the driver realizes that a collision is imminent, but the human body is too slow to be able to do something to the braking system. So these are sort of the big transformations that are coming in our cities. So just as 100 years ago, the private car came and transformed the ways, in many ways, how cities look, what are, with this kind of automation and perhaps even other things like sharing economy coming into cities, what are our cities going to look like? So to how do we build systems or models to do this kind of foresight, this, this kind of futures? That's, uh, as, uh, that's an interest for many of us in, in the Big Data Center. Um, so um, I really believe that um, data are very interesting. There is no shortage of data, obviously. All the other speakers talked about this. And um, the big data challenge is really, I see, to be fourfold. Um, there are very significant technological challenges associated with the kinds of many of the big data sources that I talked about. Not just the kinds of big data sources I specifically gave examples of, but many of the other examples that came out throughout the panels. How do we capture this data? How do you clean it? How do you curate it? How do you give people access? How do you do resource discovery systems so that a researcher somewhere else in the world finds data in Glasgow and is able to crowdsource or sort of co-produce uh, solutions in a specific neighborhood in Glasgow. So those are really important technological questions that we are interested in in UBDC. Additionally, there are very critical methodological questions that come up as well. Um, and the methodological questions that are of particular interest to me are issues of bias and uncertainty in these many of these new forms of data. I was just talking to uh, someone earlier today, the idea that we uh, roughly, many of you probably use, use this thing called Twitter that seems to have pervaded over many of our uh, 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 large parts of our lives. Um, roughly 1% of Twitter data are geotagged by the user. That means I will know where you are when you have actually tweeted, at 99% is not geotagged. But um, we are developing systems in order to be able to geolocate people who uh, have not geotagged so that I can get information on a substantially larger uh, feed of global Twitter users and where they are at the time they tweeted compared to the geotag data that are available at the current time. The reason I'm bringing this up is that Already there is a literature that has really vastly said that, okay, social media data are not representative of the total population of uh, people. But again, within social media data, the people who geotag and give away their location information are different from people who don't geotag and tweet and are probably more wary of locational privacy issues. So I'm very, we are very interested in these issues of biases, propagation of errors, and all these things that are going to make this big data economy very challenging uh, and will be very instrumental and will play a big role in, I think, in, uh, in, in, in sort of the data quality issues of the future. Epistemological challenges is the third big data challenge I see uh, that the, 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 we necessarily don't, um, uh, you know, big data is not going to be the answer to everything. Data is not going to be the answer to everything. I think there's a lot of data, there's a lot of analytics. Uh, we certainly do a lot of analytics, but going to impact, which is Matthew's original uh, uh, agenda here, is that uh, think about it as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as some sort of a pyramid with this big data, big analytics, but impact, in fact, may be quite small because unless one links one unless we link really this analytics to the governance processes the act data activism the power structures that are coming up with data uh, you know google owns all this data right i mean how, how do we have access to it so all these kind of issues have to be bypassed or overcome or addressed in some way to go from data and analytics to impact lastly i am also we are also very interested in this emerging political economy of data uh, you know data is the new oil in a sense it's going to really change the geopolitical terms of uh, of 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 uh, of, of power structures. Think about the U.S. elections and Russia and hacking and so on and so forth. I, all this is really crazy stuff, but at the same time, when you think about it, 
so much of our lives is already Google and you know Facebook and all these things. So, so really, this uh, this power structure, this 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 whole issue of trust management, issues of responsible innovation, uh, of course, issues of access and privacy, and sort of these big networks that are coming up around data and access to data are really going to play a very influential uh, role in cities of the future, in governance of the future, and I think uh, we are really interested in these issues and would be very interesting to hear your thoughts on, on this as well, because I think here listening to the public and, and, and getting feedback is uh, very important in addressing and uh, really comprehending fully some of these uh, political economic questions around big data.